I'll be honest guys, my aerial card control has come a very long way since I made my last air dribbling tutorial a few months back. Oh that was bad boy! Oh my god that was sick! I Logan Logan and I'm clipping that. So today, I'm gonna be going over everything I've done, and frankly, everything you need to know to take your air dribbles from zero to hero. Now I'm gonna cut straight to the chase because we have a lot to cover in this guide. We're gonna be hitting on wall to air dribbles, ground to air dribbles, carry to air dribbles, and everything in between. So very, very quickly, if you did happen to stumble upon this video and you're new to the channel, consider subbing. We're on the road to 200K, guys. Subbing is completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, it's time to learn how to air dribble in Rocket League. All right, guys, plan for the video is as follows. We're gonna start off with the wall to air dribble, since I know this is the most common form of air dribbling and the way you probably want to learn first. Then we're gonna hop into ground to air dribbles, then carry to air dribbles, and I'll make sure to go over the most common mistakes in between. When it comes to the wall to air dribble, there are two parts, right? First part of the wall to air dribble is going to be the setup. And then from there, the only other part of the air dribble is going to be the actual carry. So to go in order, first, how do you get down the setup? Firstly, if you are starting out air dribbling, it's very, very important that you get a smooth setup. What do I mean by a smooth setup? I mean the ball has to be rolling at a slow to moderate pace towards the wall at a pretty straight on angle. To practice the setup, I recommend you head into free play. Grab the ball, spawn it on your car using Bacchus Mod at just a little bit behind the halfway mark on the field. Once the ball gets about one and a half tiles of height, that's when we can move on to step two of the setup. Now, just like with step one, step two is very important to be precise with if you are new to air dribbling. But if you're just starting, pay attention because the most important part of the setup for you is gonna be hitting the ball square in the center of your car. At the end of the day, the reason air dribbling is harder than say, just a plain aerial. And by the way, if you can't get aerial, please do not try to air dribble. But the reason is because you have to actually match the speed of the ball and get multiple touches. So the way to best do that with the setup is to start off slow. This includes hitting it dead on in the center. That way, the ball and your car are both in line to go to the center of the opponent's net. If you can keep these two things in mind, the setup is going to become so much easier for you. One last little tip that often helps new players with the setup as well is as you are letting the ball roll up the wall, you want to quickly hit the brakes after you pop it off the wall. So give that a try for the setup, and once you can consistently get the ball in line with the center of the net on your setup, you are ready for the carry. If everything has gone right up until this point and you have a strong setup, next step is to focus on the next most important part of the air dribble, which is going to be your first touch. Now, the reason the first touch is so important is because of a concept I like to call the point of no return. Essentially, what the point of no return is, is it's the point when the ball has gained too much downward momentum for you to realistically be able to lift it back up and continue an air dribble. If you've ever tried to fly downwards through a rings map, you'll know that if you let your car fall for too long, it takes an overwhelming amount of boost to recover, which is exactly why it's called the point of no return. So bringing everything back to free play, the main thing you have to remember is getting that first touch before the ball starts falling. Point is guys, you wanna get your setup in such a way that you're in line with the net and that you start chasing down the ball to get your first touch touch as quickly as possible. Then once you reach the ball, the only thing to think about from there is where you actually hit it. In terms of mistakes, this is where I see most beginner air dribblers mess up. 
And so here's the key guys, you have to make sure while you're air dribbling, you are constantly connecting with the underside of the ball. That way you're giving it just as much vertical momentum as you're giving it horizontal momentum. This is gonna make your air dribbles so much more unpredictable and difficult to stop from a defender's point of view. So something tangible you can do that's actually helped me a lot is always practice scoring your air dribbles above the net. What I mean by this is every time you go for an air dribble, picture the net as being twice as high as it actually is. If you do that, you're gonna subconsciously carry the ball much further than if you just aim to score it at the bottom of the net. That was the biggest mindset shift that helped me level up from just all right to actually really hard to stop in game. The last big mistake that I see when it comes to wall to air dribbles is when players use too much boost. The problem with this is that if you hold down boost throughout the air dribble, what's going to happen is you'll actually push the ball out of reach and you won't be able to catch back up to it. Remember guys, the goal is to match your car with the ball at all stages of the air dribble. All right, switching over to the ground to air dribble. I'm going to try to be quick here because the truth is everything from the section on wall to air dribbles still applies here. You still want to be hitting the ball on the underside. You still want to be lifting it up as much as you can. And a great thing to practice is still picture the net as being twice as high and really try to push the ball up as far as you can. The only thing that really sets the ground to air dribble apart from the wall to air dribble though is gonna have to be the setup. And while that might sound small, the setup for the ground to air dribble is definitely much, much harder to learn and get down than the wall mainly because of things like recoil and because the point of no return hits much earlier in the ground to air dribble than when you're on the wall. So to counteract this and get an effective setup, the two quick tips you need to remember are one, hold down directional air roll or even neutral air roll when you make your first touch to reduce recoil. Second, you need to make sure you are popping the ball up in the setup when it's on the upswing. And so really the bigger pop you can get, the easier time you're gonna have throughout the rest of the carry. From there, everything that we talked about with the wall to air dribble applies, and your goal should be to simply push the ball as high as you possibly can. And that's going to be absolutely huge for improving your ground to air dribbles. All right, finally, moving on to the carry to air dribble, we can cover the last type of air dribble in Rocket League. The only problem with the carry to air dribble is it's going to require a lot of dribbling control. And that might sound like a pretty easy box to check off, but the actual control you need to have over the ball is probably much higher than you'd expect. You need to be at a point with your dribbling where you can keep the ball rolling smoothly on your car without any sparks whatsoever at a pretty moderate pace. That's going to be your key when it comes to setting up the carry to air dribble, so to speak, consistently. From there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to double jump to pop the ball up as high as you possibly can. Now, the key here is to make sure you hold your jump down to make sure the ball doesn't weigh your car down. Even more than the ground air dribble, the point of no return is going to hit super early on with the carry to air dribble. One last tip to counteract the common mistake of losing control of the ball and once again just pushing it forward is to actually pop the ball farther back on your car than you might expect. I find that keeping the ball further back from my car than I might expect at first is what helps me most with getting the setup down on the ground to air drill. But all right, I know that was a lot to cover in one video. We hit a ton of different types of air dribbling and there were a bunch of tips packed in. So please, if any of that did not land the first time around, feel free to rewatch the video. And remember that all of this stuff goes together. If you're looking to be coached by me personally, my new live coaching program is currently accepting applications for our summer launch. The coaching program is apply to enter only, and we're gonna be interviewing new applicants. Yes, we interview everybody who comes into the program on a first come first serve basis starting this June. So if you wanna get coached by me, make sure to apply as soon as possible to have the highest chances of getting in. So like if you like it, sub if you loved it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace guys.